Hello everyone. On today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most misunderstood and potentially confusing components in Homebrew Vehicle Sandbox, the propellers. So uh, to help me out with this real quick today, I've actually built myself this really cheesy looking little engine setup so I can walk you through some of the fundamentals so you can kind of understand what's going on with the propeller and how to get the most amount of performance out of a given propeller. But uh, before I do that, I'm just going to scoot over to Excel real quick and just give you guys some general tips. Uh, first of all, uh, the propeller, it works, its thrust is based on the square of its velocity, which means the faster it goes, the proportionally faster it will have more thrust to produce. Um, a larger propeller has more area to work with, so naturally you're going to go a little faster. We'll talk about this Mach 1 in a minute. Uh, more blades are always going to give you more thrust, because basically you're increasing the uh, inertia without increasing the drag, not inertia, you're increasing your efficiency without increasing the drag too much. A higher blade angle, blade angle will always give you more thrust, but uh, again, you're going to have a problem because you're going to increase drag. A uh, water propellers, because in case you're kind of curious, has about a thousand times the density of air, but because of the dynamics of water, produce about nine times more thrust than their air equivalent. So if you have a thousand RPM uh, propeller that's for water, and it's producing, you know, say a thousand newtons. If you were to stick it in the water, you'd be producing nine thousand at the same RPM. That just makes it kind of convenient rather than having to spawn it in the world and coming back. Uh, water propellers don't cavitate, so uh, because of that, there's no limitation other than the Mach speed limitation, which we'll talk about in a minute. And uh, finally, a constant speed propeller, which is something we're going to be setting up pretty early today, will give you the maximum of thrust at a given RPM, which is really nice. And a fixed pitch propeller, of course, is easy and it's quick to use. So before I get started, what I've done here is I built myself a quick little chart to show you that the angle of the blade, as it increases, the amount of drag that particular blade also increases very, very quickly. So a lot of people think, uh, we want to use as much angle of the blade as we possibly can to get maximum amount of thrust. That isn't necessarily the best way to go. As you can see, by about getting about 15 degrees, you have about 26% more drag than when you were down here, actually 24% more drag, than when you're at one degree. It's always better to spin fast than to twist the blade more aggressively. All right, let's go scoot over to the program now and see if we can find anything out. So basically what I have here is a Falcon 6 engine mounted to a gas tank, a little battery, a couple little instruments. I have a single speed gearbox to help me out with the RPM. Then I have a little uh, three-bladed standard propeller. So if I go over to the tuner real quick, you can kind of see that I have a pretty standard looking setup. The engine's powered through a gearbox, we can monitor RPM, which is powered to the propeller hub set to the default settings. So uh, let's go ahead and give this thing full throttle and see what happens. First thing you're going to notice is that our engine, our propeller and our engine, of course, are moving at the same speed since there's no gearing. Uh, for those of you guys who know this engine well, you'll know your red line is at 5,500 RPM. So anything less than that simply indicates that we're not using its full horsepower. We could certainly be using its full torque, but uh, we're at a disadvantage. So you can see we're only hitting about 1,700 RPM. Looking out front, we're only producing about 2,800 newtons of thrust, which is not a lot. So uh, most people's initial inclination are, oh, let's see if I can change the properties of the propeller to maybe get that going a little faster, like I said a minute ago. Let's try that out. So uh, I have the propeller hub open up over here. The blade angle offset at the minute is 5 degrees. Let's try 3 degrees and see what happens. All right, our propeller blade is definitely starting to spin considerably faster. Our engine's also a little bit faster, and our thrust is actually coming up very, very quickly. This is awesome. Another thing I'm starting to notice, though, is our thrust just suddenly went down. Why? If you look really, really carefully, you'll notice the propeller tips are starting to make this little thing. And if you could hear the sound it's making, you're hearing a slight whistle or kind of a buzzing noise. That's because the tip of these propeller blades have exceeded the speed of sound. In the real world, when this happens, you tend to get vicious vibration. You also tend to get a drastic decrease of efficiency and propeller self-destruction. A homebrew does have a supersonic propeller blade, but that's going to be a little outside our conversation for this point. So obviously that's not going to work. If I want to be able to take advantage of the full power of the engine, I'm either going to have to make this propeller drastically smaller or I'm going to have to gear it. Let's go ahead and try the drastically smaller route first. There we go. It's so cute. Well, our engine is certainly up at the correct RPM. It looks like we're not uh, breaking this. Oh, there it goes again. Oh yeah, definitely, but we're only producing about 2,100 newtons of force. Not gonna work. So which brings me to one of my first points. Most propellers are happy spinning less than 2,500 RPM. Now, um, the quick way we can fix that, of course, is we'll come over here, we'll put the propeller back to its default size. We'll grab our single speed gearbox, and we'll go ahead and gear this engine down. 
So I'm going to go ahead and gear this down to, say, 45. That gets me a nice, comfortable tip mock of 0.9. I'm not going to go with a bigger propeller today because I don't want to uh, have to deal with the complexities of not smacking into the ground when I jam on the brakes, for example. But anyway, let's see what we've done. Our tip speed is now under 1.0, which is good. It means we're not moving too fast. And if you take a look, our thrust is actually up to 3,444. Our engine is completely loaded, which means it sounds like we can actually increase our blade angle offset a little bit. So doing that real quick, we're up to 4,500, uh, but I don't see the engine slowing down. That makes me feel pretty good. Let's go up to 5. Uh-oh, the engine's slowing down, which means the propeller is now bogging down the engine. We were safer where we were at 4 degrees a second ago. Uh, 4584, we could still bog it down some more. No, look pretty good. I happen to know it comes out to be about 4.8. So now, with our little fixed-pitch propeller, we have a nicely loaded engine. We're producing about 5,300 pound, uh, newtons of thrust, rather. And uh, this thing's moving pretty good, and that's actually a really, really good amount of thrust for using a Falcon 6 engine. Now, that was pretty cool and a pretty neat process, but um, can we do better? Uh, the answer is, yeah, we can. Uh, if you remember what I was saying earlier, this is your drag. The number of blades you have is extra lift without drastically increasing your drag. So let's go ahead and cheat. What happens if I go with a six-bladed propeller? Keep in mind now I'm also going to have to reduce my blade angle offset a little bit. Um, even more than that. Let's go down to three degrees. Oh yeah, now we're moving. Oh, that's actually not enough. 3.5? A little too much. Probably three and a quarter. Uh, 3.3? There we go. Now notice I'm up to 7,500 newtons of thrust, up from about 2,900 with only about five minutes of work. Not bad. Can we keep going? Absolutely. Watch this. We'll go to 12 blades, and might as well go to a 2 on the uh, blade angle. Well, we can go even higher. Try 2.5. Uh, too much. 2.4. I'm happy with that. Bingo. 10,690 newtons of thrust, which is a lot. So um, the first thing you're going to say is, oh, obviously I need to always use a 12-bladed propeller because that's going to give me maximum thrust. The answer is yes, it is. But there's a bit of a problem with this. Because there's so much metal here rotating, you're actually increasing the weight of the propeller drastically, which is in turn increasing its inertia. Um, if you're always going the same speed, that's a good thing. The disadvantage, of course, is if I now stand on the gas as hard as I can, you can see just how long this thing's taking to get up to speed. And the Falcon 6 geared is a relatively good engine. Oh man, this thing's really taking forever. So um, if you're just looking for raw performance, this is the way to go. But keep in mind, this thing's already gotten pretty heavy, and that might uh, kind of counteract this beautiful amount of thrust I'm producing right now. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back to my original three-bladed propeller here. There we go. Yeah, we're only producing 5,400, but for a small airplane, that's looking pretty good. I'm curious. <laughs> cool. We'll go to a three-blader. All right. So the next thing I want to adjust, or address, I should say, is how to make a constant speed propeller. What a constant speed propeller is, is it's a propeller blade that adjusts its blade angle offset dynamically to keep the propeller turning at the same RPM regardless of engine power. This is awesome because it always guarantees you're going to get maximum performance regardless of how fast you're traveling at a given time. Keep in mind, as you accelerate, more air moving through the propeller disc is going to cause it to spin faster, which is actually going to hurt your efficiency over time. This setup's actually very easy to do. Simply come down here, grab yourself a value box. It's pretty good right there. Grab yourself a combine box. Grab yourself a nice shift box. And we're ready to go. Take the value box. I'll just go ahead and throw it up here. This doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to work. It's always been my personal philosophy for a lot of things, that is. And there we go. Go ahead and open that up now. And now we're going to... Ooh, wrong one. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to do. We're going to... Oh, I missed one. need one more combined box now that I think about it, because you're going to have to actually subtract one. There we go. Ding. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this value box and add two values. The top value is going to be the RPM that we want the engine to run at, not the propeller. You could do the engine if you want, but I... Or, propeller, rather, but I find using the engine gives you just a little bit more control. Uh, we know the red line's 5,500, but that doesn't really give you a lot of wiggle room, so I'm actually going to use 5,400. For my next value, I'm going to go ahead and use the negative 1. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the current RPM, and we're going to divide it by the desired RPM. I'm going to make sure our maximum minimum is nice and high here. Go ahead and switch this to divide. Done. 
So that tells us right now that our current RPM is moving at about 10% of the speed we want it to be moving at in a minute. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab that other combined box. We're going to take that value and subtract 1 from it by adding a negative 1. Then we're going to take that value, which happens to be minus 0.9, connect it down to the axis over here to the shift box. Uh, minimum, by the way, is going to be minimum propeller pitch. It's probably going to be 2 degrees. Maximum, it's never going to exceed 20. Speed, this is kind of a big deal because these numbers are very small. Your speed is going to be very high. Usually it could be 20, 30, 40. So now watch what happens. If I increase the speed, you're going to see that the difference goes down. And once the difference exceeds 1, instead of being a negative value that we're at doing to the shift box, we're going to get a positive value from it. So now all we have to do is come down here to our propeller hub, reduce the offset to 0, and set the angle multiplier to 1. Connect this up to this, and that's it. Watch what happens now. Go ahead and give it 100% throttle. The engine's going to spool up, and now watch what happens. The engine RPM is going to come down, and our thrust is going to gradually increase. Why? Because our propeller is increasing blade angle in order to absorb all that extra torque. Because of that, we're actually going to be moving at a more or less constant RPM. Now, you're going to see a pretty good amount of hunting of the RPM as it tries to find our ideal RPM. Now, the reason it's going to be doing that is because I basically created the integral part of a PID controller with my little shift box. But you'll notice that the value it decides on in the end is about 4.8 degrees, which, if you remember a little while ago, was the same angle we chose for our fixed blade. Now, check this out. If I reduce my throttle to, say, uh, 90%, 88%, you're going to notice that our thrust is going to come down, but at the same time, we're going to be moving at the same engine RPM because we've actually reduced our blade angle to 4.3 degrees. This is awesome, and it's a wonderful, wonderful tool, and I highly recommend you do it at all times because it's always going to give you a boost. Smart players will actually add a controller so that you can actually decide what RPM you want to set at a given time. Some people actually combine the throttle with like a multiplier or something along those lines so you can always get optimum efficiency. You'll notice even though I'm turning at 4700, which is far more than our original thrust, we're still only burning 59 liters per hour. Of course, if I hit the gas all the way, we're going to come up to our maximum fuel consumption rate. So that's basically all there is to it. So uh, most people at this point would probably go, well, can I see an example? And I said, sure, I'll show you an example. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and open up my, um, my little chirk here, which uh, some of you guys might recognize. It's a neat little airplane here, not really a lot going on to it. It's powered by a single Falcon 6 in the front. It has the constant speed setup that the other one does as well. So if I go ahead and give it full throttle, you can see the RPM come up, and then you can see the RPM start to drop gently as the uh, basically the governor starts to grab on and slow that propeller down. If this reaction is too slow, like in this case it really is too slow, I can always go back in here and I can change the speed right here. Personally, I think this is a pretty good speed, but just for the... Uh, for the good of the order, I'll go ahead and drop that down just a little bit. You can see my thrust coming up really nice. Let's see what this looks like in game real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and grab that vehicle real quick. Whoa, don't need binoculars. Grab that little chirk. And see if it works. Keep in mind the real world airplane that this uh cheap knockoff was based on accelerates you know, pretty slowly and certainly could not take off from a 300 meter runway like we have right here. Let's go ahead and try it anyway. Go ahead and give it 100% throttle. Remember that the blade angle is going to be very small at the moment. And once the governor starts to kick in, don't make a liar out of me, Mr. Airplane. Come on. There it goes. Sometimes you have to give it a little nudge to get it to unstick from the ground. There we go. All right. So in the real plane, you want to rotate at about 55. So we'll get to about 55, and we'll go ahead and pull back and see what happens. Delightful. So now this aircraft actually handles extremely close to the real-world version. We also have just about the same amount of horsepower as the real engine, too. Um, keep in mind, this is basically the identical setup that you guys saw just a minute ago in uh, the engine builder. It just happens to be mounted in front of this like this. Most people can't believe this when they see it, that you can actually power an airplane using one of those uh, Falcon 6 engines. And I'd sort of agree, because they're not the most powerful engines for airplane purposes. But at the same token, this is working great right now. And the real-world plane that this is based on certainly could not go that speed. Speed, but that's simply because we don't have any fuselage drag at the moment.
Now, the next thing you probably want to go is, well, I've been watching this video for a little while. You got anything cool for me? It's like, oh, actually, yes, I do. So uh, there's the supersonic propeller, and then, of course, there's using the large radial engine as well for a power source. Now, the large radial engine in the previous versions of Homebrew was a wee bit underpowered because uh, we didn't realize just how big of an engine that they were actually modeling. But uh, that's been recently updated. So what I'll do now is I'll quickly go ahead and put this thing down. This, by the way, is only about a 950 feet runway, in case you're interested. It's about 300 meters or so, which is uh, pretty sketchy for anything but the lightest aircraft on Earth. But I'm not too, too concerned with that because we have a pretty good setup right here. Okay, so uh, what about that radial engine? Let's take a look. One of my favorite aircraft ever. I like to call this one the Scout. This is the first aircraft I ever built in homebrew. You can tell it's got no body work on it. But it's also great because it can fly anywhere and do anything. This is a single one of the radial engines, and it also has a 12-blade propeller. When I designed this thing, all I wanted is as much performance as I could possibly get. Let's find out what happens. Keep in mind this thing's taking forever to accelerate because, unfortunately, oh, it's a 12-blade propeller. All right, the governor is starting to kick in, and this thing has just become a fighter jet instantaneously. Up in the top right you can get a feel for just how much thrust this engine's producing at the moment. Keep in mind you get a reduction in thrust the faster you're going because of the way propeller blades work, but um, I'm pretty happy uh, producing that amount of thrust in an aircraft of this particular scale. So uh, this by the way is a default scale propeller, there's just 12 blades on it. So this thing is moving. Again, some of our jet engines don't have performances like this, and they certainly don't have the same fuel economy that something like this does. So you're saying, hey, well, that's pretty cool. Can you take it too far? Absolutely, you can take it too far. I'll use my reset command to get back here. And I'll even go ahead and use something that uses dual radial engines. Again, this is just 12 blades. This is using that constant speed propeller I showed you guys just a minute ago. Now watch what this can do, however. Keep in mind, this is a much, much heavier plane. It's sitting on its tail, by the way, because I haven't quite balanced the weight on it yet. But uh, you guys will forgive me. It's going to take a little while to get those propellers up to speed. But I'm actually using dual radials. Whoa! And we are now the world's fastest propeller-driven airplane ever. So I'm going to go ahead and climb straight up. So obviously a thrust weight is greater than one. And you can tell just by looking at this thing just how excessively uh, powerful these can get when you use them properly. So keep in mind, these radial engines only have about 550, 600 horsepower-ish. So uh, combining two, you get about 1,000. So you can just imagine what would happen if you go with three or four of them. Obviously, you can go pretty fast. We're getting about 500 knots out of this thing right now, so I'm not complaining. Ignore that 9999. That's just an error on my part. Okay, now here's the tough part. What if you were interested in using the supersonic propeller? Well, the supersonic propeller kind of has its own little quirks. It produces exactly one half of the thrust of the regular propeller. However, it also has uh, double the drag, and it has an upper tip speed limit of Mach 2. So in this particular little aircraft that I have here, the way I got around that, by the way, this is a fixed pitch, which is not a constant pitch, is what I actually chose to do was to take the gas turbine, gear it 4.1 up, so instead of 1,000 RPM, I'm actually getting about 3,800. Feed that into the propeller hub and spin this thing up to about Mach 2.5. This gets me a staggering thrust of 126,000, which is impressive. It also has considerably less uh, fuel consumption than a lot of the other aircraft that you probably would use a jet. I can only imagine if you were to take two of these things, for example, and put them together to see the kind of performance you'd be able to get. Again, these are relatively simple things that I've done, and using the principles outlined earlier, you should be able to do them as well. Go ahead and climb into this. Of course, the gas turbine takes a little while to uh, spin up. That's not unusual. The real one actually takes a very significant amount of time to spin up, and you wouldn't really want to be going full throttle with it as soon as you can anyway. All right, remember, this is a fixed pitch propeller, so I don't have to worry about the thing catching. It's just going to go at its maximum speed on its own. Whoa, whoa. Okay, so there's not many jet fighters that I've seen of this particular scale and performance that quite have that sort of acceleration. Keep in mind, this thing is considerably heavier than a lot of the aircraft I've shown you so far because of that gigantic, you know, 2,800 kilogram gas turbine. But this thing has all the handling of a fighter plus all the thrust and speed of a fighter. You'll never be able to get past the speed of sound with it, unfortunately. So just like anything there is, there's always trade-offs. 
So the last thing I want to look at today is going to be ship propellers, or I should say water propellers. Now the big difference between them and the air propellers is since air, or uh, water I should say, is about a thousand times as dense as air, you're going to be getting a thousand times more thrust at a cost of a thousand times the drag. So naturally with those, it's very, very difficult to spin them very hard or at very, very steep blade angles. But going constant speed works exactly the same with those as well. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at a quick example. In project, we'll go ahead and take a look at something a little excessive. This might take a second. Ah, oh, there we are. Okay, my uh, 10 million kilogram, uh, I guess I'd call it a fuel tanker or something like that. Coming down here, it uses six, I should say three gas turbines per propeller. Each one of these propellers is the maximum scale capable with 12 blades. If I were to go ahead and uh, give them full thrust at the moment, you will notice that gives us a total thrust of uh, 48,533 newtons at its peak RPM. Keeping that in mind, all you do is have to take that value and multiply it by 9 to get how much it'll produce in water, assuming that you don't overwhelm the uh, torque of the propeller. So let's go ahead and put this thing in water and see what happens. Uh, let's see what's going to be the closest place to get to water. It works for me. Uh, it broke something. Whee! That's my fault. Okay. Let's go ahead and fly to the water to see what happens this time. This is, by the way, a beta build, so once in a while you can see all sorts of funky wonkiness. It's just kind of how this happens. All right, go ahead and put this thing down. Go ahead and jump inside the seat again. I'm going to go fly myself over to the water and uh, go ahead and try that bigger propeller out. Now keep in mind there is no cavitation model. The cavitation is basically the formation of bubbles in a uh, when you have very, very low pressure water that uh, absolutely destroys your propeller at the same time as reduces efficiency. We don't have that problem yet. I'm sure at some point we will. So uh, just because you can bring your uh, water propellers up to uh, the speed of sound doesn't mean you'll always be able to do that in the future. All right, let's go ahead and stick this thing into the ocean so that we can go ahead and try that bigger ship. This looks like a pretty good spot to land. Ooh, what the... Let's get that big one. Uh, where is it? Right there. And if I recall correctly, I actually have a little input on this thing that tells you how much thrust you're producing. So you can see just how close and accurate it is. All right, let's find out. So we're going to give it just a moment to go ahead and get up to speed. And watch how much thrust we produce. Keep in mind, it was said about 48,000 for all three. So it looks like we're producing about 150,000 for a single propeller driven by only three gas turbines. So that's pretty substantial. Of course, the uh, thrust to weight ratio on this thing is something like, uh, I forget, I think it's like 500 tons per horsepower or something absolutely garbage like that. So um, it's going to be quite a while before we actually get up to speed. Now, the last thing I want to address today is helicopter rotors. Now, um, we don't actually have rotors in a homebrew at the time of making this video. A rotor is literally a wing, whereas a propeller is uh, twisted a little bit, so you get even thrust across the whole disc. So, uh, unfortunately, you can use a propeller blade as a rotor for a helicopter, but the problem you're usually going to encounter is it's very, very difficult to control the thrust. Uh, the way I would suggest doing that is simply change the blade angle with some kind of collective control, and then go ahead and use the thing at a constant RPM. Okay, hopefully this video has been uh, somewhat enlightening for you guys and demystified propellers just a little bit. It's really a matter of playing with it, but again, I highly recommend using the constant speed method to uh, go ahead and get these to work. And at the same time, as keep in mind as the propeller goes faster, both in tip speed as well as air speed, uh, you're going to get less thrust. So you're never going to go as fast as you will with a jet engine. All right, enjoy.